Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Sunday evening, September 20th. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We continue to watch our two land-threatening storms here, Tropical Storm Beta in the northwest Gulf of Mexico and Hurricane Teddy to the southeast of Bermuda. We have a dying tropical depression, Wilfrid, in the central Atlantic. We have the remnants of Hurricane Paulette, which may reform over the next couple of days as they slide eastward to the south of the Azores. And we have a tiny area of low pressure along the cold front over Florida, which is really not expected to develop here, but might keep a weary eye on it just out of an abundance of caution as it moves out over the Gulf of Mexico over the coming days. We're going to start here with Beta, a threat to Texas and Louisiana, continuing to spread rain across the region here with rain bands now moving ashore over a wide swath of land area. The center of the storm is under this mass of cloud and uh, this is actually not thunderstorm activity at this point in the evening. This milky white mass is the remnant cirrus shield from a burst of convection that did form over the center earlier this afternoon, but has since died. And there are no new updrafts within this area this evening. So as soon as these clouds evaporate, we would have a naked circulation again visible to the naked eye underneath of these clouds, unless we have new thunderstorms go up during the course of the evening. And uh, this kind of pulsing nature to the thunderstorms is what we talked about yesterday being due to some of this dry air getting wrapped into the circulation and periodically choking off the thunderstorms after they form over beta's center and so we're likely to see these continued cycles of thunderstorm activity uh, being generated and then decaying as the dry air chokes it off over and over again as it slowly moves west northwestward toward the texas coastline this is the water vapor imagery showing again this kind of dark gray over texas getting imported through this pathway into the circulation of beta this dry air source is not going anywhere during the next couple of days and will continue to get ingested periodically as the storm nears the coast and for that reason we're not expecting any major intensity changes the storm still has winds at a maximum of near 60 miles per hour, we're likely or unlikely to depart from that value very much either way during the next couple of days before landfall. And we're likely to see a storm of a similar intensity by the time it reaches the coast. This is the GFS 500 millibar forecast from 18Z today, 2 p.m. forecast at 500 millibars showing where the storm is. Let me go back out here so I can see the time at uh, 8 p.m. this evening, and as we go forward in time, this eventually gets inland somewhere near or northeast of Matagorda Bay on the model, and this is at uh, Monday afternoon. So finally getting to the coast, and as we discussed yesterday, this ridge to the northeast of the storm uh, is still there steering the storm toward the northwest, and the storm is now most likely to move inland at least in part over Texas prior to this ridge moving off to the east, at which point we will likely now get a southwesterly flow that will try to steer the remnants of the storm northeastward through Texas and potentially into Louisiana during the following days, contributing to more rainfall across this area after the storm moves inland. This is the H-Wharf model's take on the storm structure before landfall starting this evening. And you can see this uh, little bit of moisture at the center and then dry air in brown wrapping into the circulation. And as we move toward landfall, you'll see that it maintains a similar intensity to what it is now with the pressure not falling much and the winds not changing much on the model, which has been very consistent and is consistent with what we can see in observations as well. So this moves in just east of Matagorda Bay by Monday morning or Monday afternoon, and so sometime tomorrow we are expecting landfall and then potentially lingering near the coast during the day Monday and Monday night, but ultimately moving inland enough to start decaying, and we will see the storm weaken and the winds come down, but we will still have this massive moisture that will drop rainfall over portions of central and upper Texas, and then potentially moving northeast after that uh, as we get into the middle of the week, potentially bringing rain back up north of the Houston area and into parts of Louisiana. And as we talked about yesterday, we're seeing more agreement now uh, for a track that actually gets inland before turning northeastward. So there are a few models now, if any, keeping this offshore. And we're now expecting confidently a track that takes this inland and uh, then northeastward during the next few days. But fairly slow moving, only getting to the Houston-Galveston area by Wednesday and uh, therefore rain a potential issue and flash flooding 
uh, that ensues from that. This is the official forecast showing a tropical storm warning from Corpus Christi all the way up to Morgan City, Louisiana, with uh, a large wind field here in Orange potentially bringing tropical storm force winds above 40 miles per hour well to the north and east of the center. Even if it's making landfall in central Texas, we could get those conditions all the way up across the state line into western and central Louisiana. And then that track that we showed you inland and then a turn toward the northeast over the next several days and by the middle of the week only just then getting into Louisiana. Uh, storm surge being one of the main concerns in the short term with strong winds that you can see here on satellite imagery out of the south pushing ocean water into flood prone areas here in Louisiana and Texas. And so we are expecting peak surge values of about one to three feet uh, in most parts of Louisiana, two to four feet in the Lake Charles region and three to five feet in Galveston Bay. So non-trivial water rises here that should be taken seriously if you're in a flood prone area. If you're asked to leave, please do so to avoid the ocean flooding. And uh, then some water rises also possible throughout the rest of the Texas coastline all the way down to the Rio Grande. Inland rainfall also a concern where flash flooding risk is elevated across regions of Louisiana and southeast Texas, including the Houston Galveston region and down to Corpus Christi due to all of this fresh water falling out of the sky and causing water rises in rivers and standing water in low lying areas. So that's gonna be the primary concern for beta. Wind, not as much of a concern, although winds up to 60 miles per hour will be possible near and northeast of the landfall point. But the story with this one, mostly water related hazards throughout the next three to four days or so. That's going to be it for beta. Uh, we'll continue to watch this as it goes inland tomorrow. Stay safe in Texas and Louisiana. We're going to shift our focus now to Hurricane Teddy to the southeast of the island of Bermuda, which is right here. We take a close-up look of this on the infrared, and we see a less impressive looking hurricane than we've seen in prior days. This is not unexpected as Teddy has gotten quite large here and underwent an eyewall replacement cycle yesterday. And this is now starting to upwell cold water. You can tell because there are large swaths of the circulation where thunderstorms are just missing, such as the southwestern side. This is not really due to shear. This is just due to cold water not supporting strong thunderstorms over the entire width of the circulation. And this is because the storm has gotten so large that it's starting to upwell cool water uh, ahead of itself before the center is able to move over and it's not moving that quickly so it's it's got time to upwell cool water not to mention that Hurricane Paulette cooled the water to the north of Teddy already a week or two ago we can see this on the H wharf model which is showing the sea surface temperature here in color. Here's Teddy circulation with all these contours, and you can see this swath of yellow and green, which indicates water that has cooled as Teddy has moved over it, and again, more prone to cooling on the north side since Paulette moved through. So you can see that by tomorrow morning, the hurricane is really over a pool of quite cold water, at least in this model, and that seems to be pretty close to reality given how we're seeing the storm behaving on satellite imagery. Quite clear that cold water is to blame here for Teddy getting weaker. Uh, it now has winds of about 105 miles per hour at a maximum as estimated by NHC and we're, we're likely to see that remain steady or even come down some as the storm moves up to the east of Bermuda. Still a powerful hurricane, just a little bit weaker in terms of maximum winds, but it is very large and we will likely still see tropical storm conditions on the island of Bermuda as the storm moves to the east and brings strong northerly winds on the western side. And of course, we're still expecting this track beyond Bermuda to move all the way up toward Canada. This track is very high confidence now, given current model forecasts and what we're seeing in the storm. And this little bend toward the left and then back toward the right is expected to bring the storm into Nova Scotia sometime on Wednesday morning or afternoon, where a tropical storm watch is now in effect for most of the southern coast, and then a track continuing into Newfoundland into Wednesday evening and Thursday. Once again, this storm will be weakening during this process, uh, but it will re remain strong enough to bring potential for hurricane force wind gusts in Nova Scotia, and then only tropical storm force winds in Newfoundland, though still a significant storm event for that island. So we'll continue to watch this as it comes up. It will not be a hurricane by the time it gets to Canada, but it will bring hazards that are similar 
to a hurricane. And we'll likely see more watches and warnings for the coastline there uh, in a couple of days. Again, tropical storm warning for Bermuda as the track brings it to the east, but this wind field in orange is so large that we will still see impacts to the island in the form of winds greater than about 40 miles per hour there out of the north and high surf and all of that. But fortunately, not nearly as bad as Hurricane Paulette a little while ago. That's it for now. Stay safe, everyone. Thanks for watching.